Whatever your view on the EU referendum, there's no doubt that the UK and its people have been left in a highly volatile situation. Fundamental questions have been raised about the workforce and funding of a health service already in crisis. None of us knows exactly what the future holds or can give all the reassurance we want to give to our patients and colleagues. But I can tell you about some of the practical steps the BMA is already taking. Our first priority is the safety and well-being of our members so that they can continue to care for their patients. I know you will share my disgust at those who've used the referendum as an excuse to vent their hateful and xenophobic beliefs at the people who care for them. I urge those in need to make use of our Doctors for Doctors counselling service and our members to share both their concerns and their messages of support on the Connecting Doctors part of our website. It's also vital your employers stand by you. We've been heartened by those who've told their staff members how much they are valued. And as individuals, we can also support the hashtag safety pin and hashtag love our EU staff campaigns on social media. The implications of the referendum will be felt for many years to come. And our policy staff have already started work on areas such as professional regulation, public health and employment law. In Brussels, our workload is not diminished, it is intensified. We're continuing our important work in shaping European policy in areas from trade deals to trans fats in foods. We've also written to the European organisations in which we've achieved so much to say we'll make every effort to continue our close cooperation. The political and economic uncertainty hits a health service already facing a £22 billion black hole in its finances within four years. So what the NHS doesn't need is crass political games. I wrote to the Prime Minister about the now notorious lie from Vote Leave, where it promised an extra £350 million a week for the NHS, only to renege within hours of winning the campaign. We can be sure, though, that the people voted in great numbers for extra NHS funding. The government's reply to my letter was that funding decisions will have to wait for the next Prime Minister. We won't let him or her lose sight of the crisis in the health service. I wish I could offer my overseas colleagues the assurances they deserve as to their status in the United Kingdom. We cannot offer certainty, nobody can at present, but we can offer the strongest possible support We've shown through our campaigns and disputes that we are better when we are united. More than ever, we must remain one profession.